All right. Welcome to Weather God's Wisdom, where we talk about tropics that are only immediately pertinent to land. So, in other words, I'm not going to be talking about this stuff because this stuff is long range and no. Um, I'll just get into fights in the comment section. Um, <laughs> but so we're going to be talking about 95L, who um, as of the NHC's latest outlook, I don't know why I didn't like have this up, um, has a 40% chance of develop developing in the western eastern Gulf of Mexico. Well, not, not yet the western. Uh, maybe the western. Some models are indicating that something does pop up here, but not much. Um, and then you have these two things um, that we aren't going to be talking about because screw that. Uh, our little buddy right here and then our little buddy right here. Uh, this buddy is dying and this buddy is just now coming off the coast. Um, anyway, so we are going to discuss uh, 95L. And you can kind of see in the mid-levels right now uh, some very loose spin. We've got um, not a whole lot of rotation. Uh, it's just very um, short. And you can uh, tell by looking at Sims' uh, latest 850 millibar vort that most you have um, hot, a little vort max right here in between Cuba and Haiti, and most of the convection is very displaced to the north. Um, and this is largely attributed to uh, come on, man, um, <laughs> dude, it's a struggle. Uh, <laughs> And upper level low that is kind of shearing all this convection to the um, north at the moment. And uh, not a whole lot of vorticity is happening right here. You just have like a surface trough, really. It's not, it's tighter, but it's not strong. Um, and the reason it's probably tighter is because of land interaction with the high mountains of Cuba and Haiti. Um, but it will be kind of jogging back over to the north and working its way through the Florida Straits next couple of days. Um, and wrong loop. Uh, so you can see kind of our little, our buddy right here. And you have a very large pocket of mid-level dry air that's out ahead of it. Not as much right in here, but you can see Fort Max really um, is centered right here. There's a lot of vorticity. You go to lower level dynamics, um, kind of north of it a little bit, and that's largely due to um, convection firing, um, kind of similar to Barry, um, how convection fired uh, away from the low level center, and the low level center wasn't really strong enough to um, kind of pull this in and get it going. And you can see on satellite right now on the water vapor imagery. Upper level low right here, a very weak upper level low that's um, kind of pushing this general uh, south and north and east, not south and west, that would not be helping the system either. Um, <laughs> but north and east flow that uh, is kind of pinching on this system and pushing all this convection away from the system because you have the Fort Max down here and you have the convection up here. Um, and this will get better. I keep clicking on the wrong loops and the wrong stuff. Um, this will get a little better and it will consolidate. Uh, this is 48 hours out. You see um, vorticity has improved a little bit. Again, it's very broad and you notice that some of the convection to the northeast is, has equally strong vorticity, and it depends on how much it tightens up. Um, and right now, it's not looking like it's going to be doing that. Um, I'm going to show you a difference in the model runs in a minute. And here you have our big upper level low. Doesn't really matter um, right now. It's just kind of su um, supporting a ridge that is developing, or a upper level low that's going to be moving uh, due south. You can see uh, 
um, keep clicking the wrong stuff. Um, have a kind of PV streamer come off right here. Uh, it's 24 hours. And then as we keep progressing, um, it really is right here. It's like, it's it's pretty strong. And you can see it's entering, the our, our system is entering the Florida Straits. And you have a very broad uh, PV streamer. And what this does is it shears the system in the upper levels. And the higher, the more warm the color is, the stronger the uh, shear is. And right now it is still pretty strong. This is not exactly the most favorable environment for a storm to be in. A storm would typically want um, kind of potential vorticity to be down uh, in the blues like it is right down in South America, but there's nothing coming off of South America. Um, just to clarify, uh, it does have a little bit of lower potential vorticity. That's kind of how you can detect it. Um, and as it moves into the Gulf, you can see this doesn't move much. And so that doesn't help the system. Um, and you can kind of see it's not really doing much to combat this in any form or fashion. Um, it's kind of getting massacred here. Um, but as it moves a little farther, you can see this really degrades. Um, and you still have our system right in here. Um, and so that opens it up for a little bit of development right in here. Not much. Um, it, I mean, it's crossing over very warm waters, so this could help its uh, convection not just instantly die. Um, and why? Why do you do this? Um, <laughs> and so you have... If the system was right here, and it already has pretty robust convection, it's not going to, um, this is not going to change. It's not going to suddenly die off. There's a little bit of mid-level dry air associated with this upper level low, but there, I mean, if you look at the Gulf of Mexico, if I go back, hold on, I'm going to find the Gulf of Mexico water vapor loop and have it load for like 800 years. Oh, it's not actually loading fog, um, but you can see the white at the lower levels um, you can kind of see, like, you know, right now, there's a lot of movement in the upper levels, and these are the clouds that are um, producing a little more robust moisture. But if you look beneath this layer, a very, very moist environment. And RH values are excellent for any kind of development. Um, it's a good thing that um, we are uh, in the middle of a very sheared environment. But if this breaks down, if, if the shear does break down, um, like it does in the GFS, you still have a pretty strong kind of upper level low right in here, and it's still kind of pushing against the system. You um, can't really draw. I can uh, do that. Uh, and show you uh, what direction the uh, shear is largely going, and um, so as it's pushed, you can kind of see the shear lessens, and it has a little bit of time to organize before landfall, or generally just crashing into the um, Gulf of Mexico or Gulf Coast, and ultimately it kind of depends on how fast this thing moves, because if it moves a little slower, then it gives the um, our uh, system a little more time to kind of um, you know chill out and uh, really just kind of degrade. Um, and once it does that, I think it does have a pretty good environment. You can see if it is more if it at this time if it is positioned more over here, then it's clear you know. Um, a little more time for it to develop, but if it's a little faster, then um, obviously it will not be doing too much. And you can see right here, it develops like literally right before landfall. And you kind of have this secondary fort maximum that plays. And you can see the lower level ridge is pushing it almost southwest. Um, and we're going to talk about this because 
I'm a Texan. Um, and we could have a system kind of split off and, uh, oh yeah, this is happening. Um, <laughs> uh, and this is also happening. Uh, we're going to not talk about that for the sake of time. Um, and I don't think you guys want me to talk for like nine years. Um, so this is the European solution. I have a little bit of a kind of a sticky thing off of the, um, kind of a branch of the main system, if you would call it that. Um, and it kind of, um, it forms it a lot further east, which is better for the system overall. It develops it and um, kind of generally moves it along this kind of uh, tropical storm Gordon track, if you will. And you have this secondary little Vort Max. Um, it'd be nice if I got some rain. I'd really love some rain. Oh, and then this happens. But we're not going to talk about that because we don't want to talk about that. And this is 192 hours out, and I don't want to talk about that because if we're being real, this is going to change so much. This forecast is going to change like 8,000 times, and there's no reason for us to speculate on a system that's way back here and like be like, oh, it's clearly going to hit the United States right now. Like, that is not a certainty. So... With that, I'm going to end the video with this thing um, impacting Hispaniola. This is 174 hours out, but the euro is actually a little slower, which I think is interesting. And yeah, this is not something that we want to talk about right now. Um, so with that, I'm going to call it a night and get back to studying.